And here we are today on the, where I wrote it down, on the, uh, somewhere, um, on the 15th, yes, of the 5th, 2.16. And, uh, yeah, what we're going to have a look at first is what's going on around us. Talking to a chappy on the street recently. I mentioned this in the midweek meet, I'm pretty sure, but I'll mention it again. So here we are at Paradise Now Church uh, Sunday meet. And uh, yeah, run into this young man on the street. He was talking about different churches he went to, and he made mention that there was. Um, a church he went to where everyone smoked drugs, you know, and ganja. And I thought, well, Pentecostal. I thought, what sort of church is that? You know? And uh, these are the days we're in. This is what we're being surrounded by. Is it any wonder the Lord said, will I find any faithful when I come? Will I find any that are full of faith in Him? People have faith in all kinds of things, in all peop different people. How many will have faith in Jesus? When He comes, how many will be trusting in Him? Or some other thing or person has won their heart and, and won them over and, and they divorced Jesus, their husband, and ran off with another man or, or another woman or another thing because there's things around too transvestites and all kinds of things around today this is how evil it is in the, in the last days dark days will come dark doctrines gunja at church Oh, all the blokes smoke it at church. Oh, really? So, uh, you know, we need to be grateful that we have a place where we can go and stand on holy ground where the truth is spoken and the numbers are few because few find the narrow gate because few are looking for the narrow gate. Few are looking for the truth. They want a version of, of the truth which is not able to save. Can someone say amen? I don't know how many avid, vivid, uh, uh, avid uh, music listeners, I should say, we have here in your spare time. But there's a, a Nick Jonas. I don't know if the young ones know Jonas. Well, he, he's another one that went along with Bruce Springsteen with the LGBT movement and also inclusive Alan Degenerated. They're all in there, you know. Yeah. Signs of the times. The Lord's revealing who's who in the zoo. Uh, you know, going into bat for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transvestite creatures. Right? So we know that we can't fellowship with people of such carry on, eh? And if you don't fellowship with these people and go along with this this new movement, which is huge, unbeknown to most, huge movement, the LGBT movement. It's another LGBT movement is another name for Sodom and Gomorrah arising uh, like a phoenix from the from the ruins it's another Sodom and Gomorrah movement and uh, the last Sodom and Gomorrah movement only three escaped Lot and his two daughters boy oh boy I mean it's, it, it's, it's rough days isn't it as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be before the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus the Christ, 
they'll be marrying and giving in marriage they'll be eating and drinking we, that's all we see on tv and yeah isn't it all you see is wedding gowns and chairless whinging about their gowns went brought forth and the stitching come undone or something and uh, paying top dollar for all this stuff and um, food food glorious food you know food you just see so much food you don't even need to buy anything to eat you just turn the tv on and look and you you feel bloated just looking at it you know just you know they got burgers you needed a step ladder to um, lay hold of i was looking at the number 666 the other day and it's i came across a a translation of six the number six apparently uh, in the world of sorcery uh, six is said to be a mother number. Isn't that strange? And you've got the mother church uh, who actually rides uh, the 666. Hey? The mother church, the Roman Catholic church, rides, rides the beast. And the beast is quite happy for her to be on uh, his back there, riding, you know, down the road there, happily. But we know by the scriptures that the day will come when that beast will turn around and devour the church, the Roman Catholic Church, and all associated uh, with, um, with her. Hey, we're in the last days uh, with a great decline in manhood. Men are not men anymore. You know, they just don't have that... that that fortitude, the backbone, to stand up and call a spade a spade and not a great big shovel, hey? and just say, look, this is the way it's going to be, like it'll lump it. You know, that's the front door, that's the back door. The windows are open too, if you're in that much of a hurry. Uh, but the, the Jezebel whore church, the Roman Catholic church, matriarchal mama, dominating the scene across the globe see uh, with the mother numbers 666 the mark of the beach the mark of the beast the image there's a lot of images out there of um, of what's coming and and people you know let me say, when you, when I came to the Lord, the Lord told me I have to get rid of my image, because it was a beastly image, you know, it was devilish. I had to get rid of, but it's hard for a man to shake. He, he, every man's got his image, you know what I mean? And it's all Adamic and it's all satanic. Until we come to the Lord, you know, I had the, you know, the desert boots, as they called them in my day. Desert boots, uh, and um, just want to close that. We want to hear what's going on out there. Desert boots, the jeans, you know, the, the Levi's in my day, Levi jeans, and the Jackie House singlet, you know, and show a bit of muscle there. And that was it, you know, that that was my image: a motorcycle, you know, ganja and um, whiskey and. That was the image. And the Lord said, you've got to get rid of that image. And uh, I just ran at it, you know, head first and ran at it. And just, I just went baggy pants and, you know, Vinnie's shirt sort of thing. And, uh, you know, covered myself up. And just didn't entertain any of the places at all. Forgot about there was even a night time, you know, <laughs> and didn't worry about that because I'm a child of the day now and, and that's where uh, I operate in the day. So when I think about the writings of the image of the beast and those who, you know, who would even uh, entertain anything associated with the fall and, and Satan, we just got to flee. We have to flee that. We got. We can't have any part with it. We have to come out 
from among the mother numbers and the mother church and everything and the churches, the fallen denominations that have uh, decided to fellowship with the whole church and the beast and, you know, um, as I have said before, the Roman Catholic Church, very powerful because she's beast powered, you know. It's like a lot of these mega churches, you know, not a lot, all of them, beast powered. You know, you see that the great churches in the book of Revelation, they had nothing, they were considered as nothing, and they were small in number, small in authority in the land, and they were, um, you know, uh, appearing poor to the eye. The church at um, Smyrna, you know. Uh, in poverty and troubled. And when you talk it like that, people just don't want to know about it, you know. People don't want poverty and trouble. I mean, that's just, I was going to say, that's human, but it's not, it's endemic. Okay? It's not messianic. Paul, uh, and even Moses said, I, I, I'd rather suffer with the people of God than to enjoy uh, the passing pleasures of sin in Egypt. Uh, he considered um, the reproach of Christ greater riches than uh, were in Egypt. And that's really something to behold, isn't it? So, let me mention a, a, a what's going on in our law courts too, just to sort of G you up a bit, you know, and remind you. It's not tedious for me to say these things. They're all helpful. That there's no righteousness, there's no justice in the world and in the land anymore. There's a guy, his name was Sam Swala. I don't know what nationality really, but he certainly wasn't English. And... Um, he got involved in a bashing in Melbourne. There was a married man sitting in the park and there was two guys, one quite big and the other one medium sized. And they were drinking alcohol and only God knows what else they had in their system. And they went over to this family man who's having a break or something. He's just sitting there, he had a nice wife and a, and a child and and went over and said, give us your wallet and your phone or we'll bash you, you know. And he manned up and said, no, oh, you won't be touching my wallet or, or my phone. So they started thumping him and thumping him. Anyway, they knocked him unconscious. And and then this Sam Swala fella, he, he decided to, you know, that he, he had the devil with him, this fella. Oh, no doubt about it. I was watching this on television. And he... he I don't know whether it was his belt or, 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 or the victim's belt, but he pretty sure it was the victim's belt. He tied the belt around that bloke's throat and he dragged him along the dirt and took him behind a building and, and the guy was crying out for mercy. You know, I believe that this fellow, Swala, doesn't cry out to the Lord for mercy and repent. He's going to be crying out in hell forever. And he dragged this innocent man behind the building in that park in Melbourne and, and bashed him to death. I, I, was, I, was, I was nearly in tears, you know, watching what was going on. And, and then he had the, the audacity to say that he, oh, no, he must have made an agreement with his mate because his mate got jail, only a small sentence, I believe. And then this, this Sam Swala, Swala bloke, he started to say that, oh, I was trying to help out. I, he was the middleman. What a liar. And a current affair got smell of this and got onto them. And it, they were following this Sam bloke round when he got out of court or something. He said, you're a liar. You, you're lying. You, you're with this. You're in on this. You're the one that joined in and killed him. And now they're going to have a retrial, I, I believe. But this Swala fellow at this moment he got community service making jam or something, you know? And this is the justice system. 
This is, yeah, yeah. It's just, don't worry about the devil. Look, the devil is the devil, you know, and he has his children, and uh, we don't worry about them because they're cowards and they, they've got no backbone and they can't flee sin because they're weak, weakling. It's the saints and the men of God that, that have the backbone and the, and, and the intestinal fortitude to say, come on, bring it on, you know. Hit me with your best shot, you know. <laughs> and I'll pray for you then. Um, this is our justice system, hey, community servants making jam. Oh, I reckon he's low-life scum. That, that's what I think. I don't think you could put any other name on him except low-life scum. And uh, if I was uh, had any authority to lay a sentence down for people who bash people to death, and, and, and coward punch them. Look, I, I, I'd make it um, law, 10 years minimum. And that might just get them to think twice. It'd be 10 years minimum. I don't care who they are. I don't care what the situation. If you punch a bloke and kill him, it's 10 years minimum and we'll start the jury from there. And we'll go on. You know what I mean? I'd even include the whip. And the one that they, the family of the dead one can throw the salt on the wounds. Well, it's healing, isn't it? You've got to heal them. And then throw them in the back of the paddy wagon, take them off to the jail and give them bread and water. There'd be no television and uh, iPods. Hey? It's none of this three-course meal garbage. Bread and water. And we'll see how tough they are when they come out of there. And then when they get out of jail, then they start mowing lawns for pensioners for nothing until they get a job. But we don't have men like that in the government. And the magistrates' courts, they're all fairies. Some are even faggots. they got no backbone. And that's why everything's turning pear shame. There's maddies out there, rat bags, running around bashing girls and raping and bashing pensioners for their money. Coward, gutless wonders. They need to draw the line. And they need to say, thus far and no more, devil. It's over as of today. Ten year sentences. Minimum, if you start playing up. Can someone say amen? amen? Oh, hallelujah. I rejoice in that. Brian Houston's on TV this morning, ministering on, or endeavouring to, ministering on time and chance. You know, there's a scripture there. I think it's Ecclesiastes or something. Time and chance. Um, yeah, Brian, uh, you know, the reality is that Brian never, never laid hold of the chance he had. Brian Houston never laid hold of the church, uh, the, the chance he had to clear his church and to clear the foundations of Hillsong because the foundations of Hillsong were laid by a serial pedophile. His father, uh, Pastor Frank Houston, serial pedophile. But Brian passed up that chance and... Uh, he never took the time to to expose his father in front of everyone and show that he loved Jesus and justice more than his father, as the scriptures say. You must love the Lord more than your family. Otherwise, you're not his. And he missed that chance. And, and, and he never redeemed that time and that opportunity he had at the Royal Commission of, of child abuse into Hillsong. He missed it all. And he could have cleared the books. And, and he could have said, yes, yes, my, my dad was a serial pedophile. It wasn't one child. And, and then they may be that. Then they try to turn around and say that the child was enticing Pastor Frank Houston. How low can you go? He should have told it the way it was. And he should have said, yes, he was a serial pedophile time and time and time and time and time again just like 
Pastor Jim Williams of the Assembly of God in Garden City when he was there. Both deceased now, and they just left a trail of, of ruin. And now the courts are saying, well, uh, those who've been abused by these church leaders and that, now they're going to have to pay recompense. And um, this is good news. At least it's something to acknowledge that uh, uh, they've wrecked a, a person's life. Amen. So Brian is ministering about time and chance. Lay hold of the chance. Lay hold of the time. You know, redeem your time. Hey. He could have cleaned the name. But now that church will go on forever under that banner and under that foundation that a serial pedophile, Pastor Frank Houston, serial pedophile foundation that church is laid on. Now, what sort of foundation is that? I don't believe for one minute God Almighty, the Holy God of Israel, I do not believe that he made that church as big as it is today. I believe the mighty dollar has made that church the way it is today and the God of this world, Satan. I believe that without a doubt. Without a word of doubt. And I, I have no bones about making it public. Yeah? So we're going to go into the message today. And we're doing a series. And the series is... Uh, Christos confrontation and we've come a long way week after week after week and um, I had to even confront those situations this morning relating to justice and, and the courts and just mentioning to us in this fellowship and making things clear that we're not of, uh, uh, of uh, the Adamic race anymore. We're not of this violence and hatred and and um, whitewashing sin like Brian Houston does. He whitewashed, he got his little roll, Hillsong roller out and whitewashed his dad's record. But the record is clear in heaven. Serial pedophile Frank Houston! It was stand at the judgment stand. And we know he never repented, don't we? We know that. Because he continued repeatedly, repeatedly to, to molest children, little boys, one after the other. But yet they say, come and see what the Lord has done. I know what the Lord's going to do on the judgment day. So anyway... And if he did repent before he died, I'm sure Brian Houston would have said, yes, exactly that's what he was. But he did repent, I know he did. But I don't know if the Lord forgave him. Because there's many scriptures to put a big question mark over that. Can someone say amen? So we're in the last days, and this is the last days church. This is a watchman ministry and we're watching all the time. What's going on around us, what's going on in the spirit, what's going on in the world, what's going on within us. We must have a close watch on our heart and guard our heart with all diligence. So we're in the Christos Confrontation series. And if we want real results, we're going to have to do it the real way. We're going to have to do it the Redeemer's way. Then you get the real result. And when you repent, then you really are forgiven. That's how you know you've repented. You've been forgiven. How do you know you're forgiven? You're not doing it anymore, are you? You've been forgiven. You've been cleansed. You've been delivered. You've been empowered. And you're not doing it anymore. That is the fruit of true repentance. The, truth, the, 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 the fruit of true repentance is uh, bearing fruit befitting. Hey? We bear that fruit, the fruit of obedience. 
That's how we know we've repented. We're obeying the Lord. But the churches today have another repentance. It's another Jesus with another gospel and another forgiveness and a, another uh, repentance and another outcome with another fruit. Plastic fruit. You've seen it on the table. Oh, my grandmother had heaps of it. Back in her days, that was the go, you know, plastic fruit. It don't rot, just give it a dust. And it looks nice, you know, as you walk in the door, you know, and there it is on the table there in the sunroom. Yeah. But we want the real fruit, don't we? We want the fruit that surpasses the, 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 the local grocer. We want the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The fruit of the characteristic of Christ. Oh, glory. So we've been doing the Christos Confrontation series and we've done the C and we contended and we overcame and, and we said the noble heart is, is needed to, to confront. We, we've got to be honest. We're, we're not going to take ground if we're not honest with ourselves. If you're not honest with yourself, how can you be honest with God? That's the first step. I, when I came to Jesus... The Lord said to me, now, come on, you be honest now. I said, oh, well, what am I going to say? Oh, well, I'm a sinner, but I'm not like those others. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I was a sinner, but I really didn't do what they did. No, 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 no. Be honest. Be honest. You're just a sinner like everyone else. Filthy, unclean thing. Hell bound. Not worth a dollar in the eyes of God. I don't care who you are. And that's when I got the noble thing happening, you know. All right, you know, this is good. Then I got real and I said, yeah, that's me. <laughs> you who, can you save me, Lord? Of course I can. That's what it's all about. It's all about confession. It's all about bearing that fruit of your confession. Right? And going forward with it. Otherwise, you, you're just fooling yourself. We're just fooling ourselves. Right? We're not fooling anyone else. You're not fooling the preacher. You're not fooling God. You're not fooling Auntie Betty or the family. You're fooling yourself. That the Bible calls itself deceived. Here is of the word, but no way doers. Yeah, so we ended up in the F confrontation, c -c 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 confrontation, and then we went to the F, and that was we thought we we series up there too, and and then we got F forget forget the past, forget yesterday. What's there? It, you know? You imagine, you, everyone cooked a meal yesterday or they bought a meal. I bought this curry pie. I, I'm going to take Brother Phil down there. I went to this bakery. Whoa. I mean, you can really see the, you know, that nice yellow turmeric in it. It's good for you too, apparently. And I had this curry pie I bought, and, and, and they just peed up, you know. There's so many peas, and the peas were sweet and just flowing over the side. Oh, it was just so awesome. I just stood outside the car and bowled it over, and my daughter said, Dad, you look like a bogan there. And I said, oh, let me be bogan just for this moment. You know? <laughs> well, I eat this curry pie! And I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Now I forgot what I was talking about. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to take Brother Phil there. He, and Brother Shane if he wants to come along. <laughs> and we'll do a few of the dog's eyes with fleas and dead horse. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll get blessed. And we've got to forget. That made me forget my hunger and appetite, you know, after I ate that. We have to forget. We, we, have, we have something new now. We have something better, bigger more enriching 
we, we have Jesus now, right? And we're not going to be able to confront our issues. We have issues within, we have issues without. We have I issues everywhere we go. You, you go to a shop, you get issues there. You just try to buy something, you know. You know I've been to shops where to buy something and I went to the counter and they said, yes, what do you want? I said, whoa, sorry. Um, is it okay if I buy something, you know? you got to handle it. you got to confront these issues, not in the flesh, but in the spirit, in a Christos, uh, uh, Christ-like manner. That's the way that we confront things. You know what I mean? we got to confront. We need to, to close that, brother. we we got rat bags around the place everywhere. You know what I mean? And we know we know the God of this world is the devil. Right? He's not called the loser of this world, he's called the God of this world. So he's got a bit of oomph. He's got he's got a bit of tug around the place. We're in the forget uh, mode. And F O R G E T. And we're down to uh, the the E. Last week we done the E. We, the the F was for focusing on him in the word forget the o was for um offering ourselves that's how we can forget when you forget about yourself you've got to be thinking of something haven't you you forget about the past we have to focus on jesus we'll forget the part we have to offer ourselves to him a living sacrifice if we don't it'll be self it'll be memory lane It'll be memory road. It'll be all the past and what we didn't do and our family, you know, growing up and, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. I'll go away. Go on. Get out of here. Go away. I don't want to hear that past rubbish. What I didn't do, I didn't do and it can't be changed. But what I'm going to do now and today is what I'm going to do now and today. And you... Children are growing up and you say, look, you're big and ugly enough to sort it out yourself. Too many children dumping their garbage on their parents because they never done this and never done that. Gee, I could say a few things about my dad, what he never done for me. He, had, he didn't have to do anything for me. He was my dad and I loved him because he was my dad. Not because he'd done things for me. What sort of person is that? They don't know what love is in the world. I'm sure they don't. Always attaching something, you know. We just do it because we love them, you know. Whoever it is. We just do what Jesus said. I love Jesus. He said this is what you do. We just do it. And think about it. Even just to say you'll think about it is to say, oh, I've got rebel in me. <laughs> I've still got rebel in me. And the Lord will cut that out if you stay on the operating table. Can you say amen? Yeah. F-O-R-G-E-T. Forget. And then um, the R was for rejoicing. That's the one way to forget the past and so many live in the past and we know that on TV. The devil's work is to drag people back into their past and to find your roots and who you really are. Oh look, you're a sinner. <laughs> That's it. That's the, you know, the bottom line. That's the root of it all. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you, your dad used to fight with the red coats. You know what I mean? Or he was a rebel soldier in the, what do they call it, the the war in America, you know, Confederate Army or something. What is that matter? He was a sinner too. The Bible tells us who we are. Sinners! Sinners! Sold under sin because of Adam and Eve. And now we forget that. So, right, what are we gonna, what's on the plate today? What, what are we going to do? going to repent and we're going to go forward now. We're going to be like the emu and we're going to be like the kangaroo. They don't go back, 
They go forward, 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 forward. Onward, Christian soldier, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Marching forward. No sideways. Crabs walk sideways. Lobsters walk straight. No backwards. Forward. I'm a Christian soldier. Rejoicing all the way. And then we looked at the G, which was girding. And we, we have to be girded up. We... With truth, we have to have people of truth around us. You don't surround yourself with honest people, you're going to end up dishonest. You know? Bad company. Dishonest people corrupt. You can't have it around you. It's a disease. These things are like diseases. They cling to you like poison ivy, you know? Like wait a while in the jungle. You got to get rid of that. You got to you got to gird up with the truth. You got to surround yourself uh, with the truth and with righteous people and the right atmosphere, which is um, an atmosphere that's approved of by the Lord, not some wild uh, nightclub or something. And then we looked at the E, which was last week, experiencing. And, and exhibiting uh, the gladness. And we went to Psalm 122 for that last week. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. I, I can't be any other way. It, it's 29 years next month for me being glad. I'm still glad today. You know, I, I'm glad right now. And I never finished the gladness that I have. I, I, I never exhibited at all last week, so I'm going to do it this week. So we're doing EE2, not ET2. EE, -E, experiencing and exhibiting uh, the gladness, re re rejoicing. And we, last week we said that glad was experiencing and exhibiting great joy and pleasure and it's a pleasure for me and it should be a pleasure for you to go to the house of the Lord because we know there's something there not even so much other people we know that the Lord's going to say something the Lord's going to going to touch us and to get a touch from the Lord is so real can someone say amen, amen. so we need to be grateful to the Lord if we're going to be glad. If we're not grateful, look, no gratitude's a bad attitude. We sh the Lord has, has exalted me to the place where I'm glad for an apple. I wasn't like that in the world. I was so, you know, hard to please. I was so difficult. The Lord has re uh, uh, exalted me to a place where I'm, I'm very glad, I'm, I'm very grateful and happy for a glass of water. I know the value of a glass of water. And because that's my standard, anything above a glass of water is a bonus. You get that? I don't, a lot of people don't get it. It brings us back to the example of... of how the Lord said to pray. How he said pray is to talk. Give us this day our daily bread. Not Mercedes Benz. Give us this day our daily bread. See? That's all we need. Because he's the, he, he's the lion's share of our day and ourselves. You get that? You know? He, he is the lion's share of our life. He's the biggest part of our life. You only need daily bread. Because he's, he, he's taken over everything else. But so many people today, oh, we want this, 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 and we want it now. You say, man, you are one empty person. 
You need Jesus. Then you'll be complete in Him. In Him. So many people are not, not they're incomplete. It's soul searching and, and, and beach surfing and, and they're doing all sorts of things. They're trying to become famous, you know. Uh, they want to reach the heights of education or. It, it's Adamic. One word from Solomon solves it all. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. It's all, you know, talking to the wind without Jesus, without the Lord at the end of the day. I was talking to a man yesterday uh, and I was saying to him that everything, because I know this man is stressed out. I'll use that word, stress, because people don't understand what it really is, which is oppression of the devil. Jesus come to set those free who are oppressed, you know. The world calls it stress, takes the, the attention away from Jesus, word. And I was ministering to this man and I said, hey, uh, you know, everything that everyone wants it is all because of a lack in here, in the inner man. And when you've sorted out the inner man, and the Lord is your shepherd, and the great shepherd is your Lord, you have no want. You don't want for anything. Because you have him. He is your peace. He's broken down every wall. He is your joy. My goal is God. Not, not gold, not silver, not fame, not fortune, not to please people. My goal is God. See? And then, it's all, we cut to the chase, don't we? call off the, the chase. There's no more competing in the rat race. You dirty rats. There's no more. <laughs> Don't forget the money's under the tree. <laughs> you call off the rat race. If you ever say, oh, haven't you got any money? No. Money? What's that? Everyone needs money, you know. Take your mind off it and you might have some. Put your eyes on the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and then everything will be given to you. Either Jesus is a liar or they are who say that it's not so. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added. Added. That's not, not lump sum payment. This is added as you need it. Oh, I need this. Oh, there it is there. I need it. Oh. oh, I better get this. Oh. You know? It will be given to you. You've got to believe, but haven't we? It's faith. The Lord doesn't want us to lose faith. So today, we're doing part two on uh, experiencing and, and exhibiting this... Uh, uh, this gladness that the Lord has given us by His Spirit, initially by His blood, through faith. It's by faith. And if you lose faith, you lose trust. And then all sorts of things happen. Two things cause us to lose faith and trust in the Lord. And we lose our gladness and joy then. Number one, sin. You start to not to believe. The devil comes out, oh, really? I don't believe that. You don't believe that, do you? That's what he said to Eve. He said, you don't believe that? And then the next thing is who's surrounding you. 
and who's speaking into your head and you start to lose faith. You don't need that, you need this. You know, what well, we hang out, let's hang out, let's do this, let's do that. And it, everything they say and do and want you to do is contrary to the faith. And then you start to lose faith. I, I don't know what's wrong, you know. I'm, I'm, like I'm not feeling it anymore, you know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I know what's wrong with you. You're listening to endemic people too much. Or there's sin in your life. That's what's wrong. <laughs> it's simple. Hey? It's simple as. So... We're going to move into the message today. Our message today is called Royal. Royal. And we initially started with Psalm 122, verse 1, which says, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Wow. There's people the other day. It was show day. Well, it's show time. In Ipswich, you know, and there was a public holiday. And everyone was glad that they're going to go to the show and catch the flu, you know. <laughs> and maybe get maybe if they if they're lucky enough they can even get salmonella or something you know um, eat some rancid chicken or something like that have a great day <laughs> uh, royal royal well wow. wonderful. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Only going to read one verse. That's all we need. It takes everything out, doesn't it? It's all good. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for him. Confronting the situations in ourselves, around us, in our family, in our relations, in our relationships, and in the world, in our minds, in our wills, in our emotions. Confronting it, Christos style. And everything's nice. We, 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 we're standing on solid ground then. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal, royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of sin into his marvellous, marvellous. You will marvel in his light. Right? It will be greater than Miss Marble and her detective stories. <laughs> you will marvel. I marvel. I, I just marvel. I mean... Not long now, and I'm off to Vegas, and I marvel at that, you know. Oh, Viva Las Vegas. Wow, they'll be spinning those dices, and people be yelling and screaming. And I'll just walk in there and go, okay, <laughs> punks. No, <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm here to bless you. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going over there to take them the gladness, you know, and hopefully I want to get them in, lock them in, I into the glad tidings of the goodly things, of the goodness, of the good God and, and Saviour Jesus. They, they don't have it because I know they don't have it because they're in Vegas gambling and, and, and mauling prostitutes and, and, and they're there... Um, uh, stealing and cheating and lying, they don't have gladness. Otherwise, why would they go there? I said to a bloke, go to a Baptist church during the week. He was having something to eat and I was having a cup of tea and I just passed by and, oh, there you go. There's a blessing for you. We got talking. And he said, oh, it's like this, it's like that. I said, hi, hey. you know. That's because of what's going on inside you. He was a Baptist, you know, um, of the Baptist church, not of John the Baptist. Not of that line of character. And 
he, he was a mess. Just as I spoke to him for 10, 15 minutes, went on to 20, half an hour even. And I just gave him a few testimonies, what's going on, and he started to get glad, you know. The gladness was coming off, you know. And we started to be glad lads. And then the wife was getting to be a glad lassie. Nothing to do with the dog lassie. But glad lads and lassies we were, you know. There, and everyone's looking, and they're going, yeah, praise <laughs> Jesus. And but I said your issues are inside. Don't he's talking about money, 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 and bills and this and that. And I said, oh look, the issue's inside here. It's going on inside. Once you sort out the inner man, oh look, everything outside just looks different. You know, if you're living in a small caravan, it's like a palace. You know what I mean? If you're living in a small house, it's like a castle. You know, everything changes because of Jesus. And that's why I'm so glad. He didn't realise. He told me he was born again. You know, I don't know what they think born again is at the Baptist. I think it's water baptised or something, isn't it? But he wasn't showcasing or exhibiting nine in 1 Peter 2. There was no e exhibiting of this. You are, that settles it, that settles the whole day and every problem there, you are. <laughs> Who is? You are. You are. Who are? Let's go to 1 Peter 1. You are. You are. Verse 1, 1 Peter 1. Peter, an apostle of the Christ, to the... Pilgrims to the pilgrims, verse two. You can read the rest, Galatia, Capit, those here. Verse two, elect according to the foreknowledge of the Father in sanctification of the leading of the Spirit for obedience. Through the blood. You get that? Hey? That's who the elect are. That's who the elect are. Sanctified. Hey? Separated. It's the spirit that separates us. It's, it's the Holy Ghost leads us away. From the Adamic way. Someone say amen. amen. It's the Holy Ghost. But, as it says, only on obedience. Finishing off with, it's all capable and we're able, capable, because of the availability of the blood, that the blood made it possible for us to obey and be led by the Spirit. So that we can be the elect and that we will be pilgrims. That's passing through. We have to have that mindset. We're passing through. Don't be like the Adamic people and they're always worried about building houses and digging in to a rotten foundation on this earth. Because the foundation of the earth is faulty. The scripture says. We are pilgrims. Howdy pilgrim. And we're passing through. See that? We're passing through. We're not bogged down. I don't have this. I don't have that. And you're looking at the material. And you're looking with your eyes. And you're not looking with the word. We have to take things on. We have to take things on through the word. We see things according to the word of God. What the Lord has said. Put on his mind, his word. That's our mindset, his word. That's the way I think. That's the way I am. That's the way it is. That's the way it always will be. And then, you won't get weary in your soul. You, you won't be bogged down. You, you, you won't be miserable. 
you'll be saying, I was glad. I was so glad. I was happy. Oh, hey, can't, can't wait. You'll be ringing up the brethren. Can't wait for Sunday. S-O-N-D-A-Y. Can't wait to get there. Wow. What's the Lord going to say through the earth and vessel this Sunday? Woo-hoo. Man, alive. How blessed are we that we are chosen for this. How blessed are we that, that we are uh, according to the foreknowledge of Father. Sanctified in sanctification of the Spirit. Hey? What do you think of that? Let's go over to 1 Peter. Chapter 1 and 22, going a bit further on. 1 Peter 1, 22. Since you have been purified, since you have purified your souls by obeying the truth through the Spirit. In sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed of your parents, not of sperm. That's how my children were made. Sperm from my mother, sperm from me. And then God formed them in my wife's womb. We're not born of that anymore. We're born of the Spirit. Not having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the Word. Born again through water and the Spirit. The water of the Word. And the Holy Spirit, even the Word is Spirit. The words I speak to you are Spirit, Jesus said. Power of the Holy Ghost behind it all. Empowering, born of a new family, born of a glad household. Not some miserable, broken down household that's living in the past. Born of... The household of God. Royal. You are royal. You are. And trying to find out who they are. Just call me royal. Just call me royal in the morning, angel. Just make my tea before you go, dear. Baby. Purified your souls through a bit. It's not going to happen without obedience, is it? Oh, you don't have to obey, you know. Oh, you know, saved by grace. You unclean thing. Get out of here. Purified your soul, mind, will and emotions by obeying the truth. Obeying. That's where the sanctification separation comes in when you obey the truth and you start the oh you're drifting away from you and it's breaking me into watching you going to hell Max Merritt wasn't it? and the medians oh sinner I've been watching you watching everything you do and it's breaking me into watching you obeying the devil. Oh, slipping away from me. Oh, slipping away. Obeying the truth. So our message today is royal, 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 royal. Royalty. You are a chosen. That makes me glad. I can exhibit that gladness. Hey. I can take that on. 
I, I can personalise that. I, I know who I am. I'm royal. I'm chosen. Hey? Fancy that. I can't get over it. I can't stop laughing in, in, in the lounge. I can't, I'm making a cup of tea. And, oh, <laughs> oh, man. This, and the cup of tea's strong. It's got, you know, a little bit of sugar there. It's strong. And it's got a good appearance. And it's in a nice... Uh, cup and you know everything's nice and I'm just laughing I say, oh Lord you chose me really I mean people are jumping up and down they get chosen for the Broncos come on I, I've been cho you're chosen you're a chosen people the, I'm talking God here I'm, I'm not talking you know a God I'm talking, God chose me. Oh, man. I mean, I'm going to go over there to Vegas, and I, I, because I've experienced, and, and, and I am experiencing, and that'll be the same on the plane and all the way through, the gladness. I, I, I'm just going to walk into Vegas and say, man, I am glad. <laughs> and just wait for someone to say, what about <laughs> I say because I don't gamble <laughs> and I don't smoke cigarettes either and I'm not here to, to contract any STDs and I don't need booze and I don't need to play poker. He <laughs> said, so, well, what are you doing here? I say, well, do you really want to know? He said, well, I didn't ask you for nothing. I said, I might want to tell you. <laughs> I said, I'll tell you what, you get me a cup of tea and we'll sit down over there and I'll tell you all about it. And I just take my brochure out of my suitcase, and I said, that'll do it, <laughs> and lay it on the table and say, well, you have a read of that? I'll just drink my tea and you can talk after that. And then I'll tell you about how glad and how great it is to be royalty. <laughs> I just say, you don't know, do you? You just haven't worked this out yet, have you? No? You know, you're talking to royalty. You go, what? Are you, are you, a, are you a prince? I said, yeah, exactly. You got it. You're pretty, you're pretty clever, you know. I'm a king. What? You're a king? Yes. I'm talking to a king. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what we're exhibiting. We're not exhibiting some denomination. Dry, dusty, dead religion. <coughs> Climbing our way up a pyramid ladder with slime on it to a material teepee. You know what I mean? That's not ours. That's not ours. You just say, you keep your slimy pyramid of progress because I'm going to be pilgriming on with the lamb. Royal. How many people came here this morning? How many people listening to this message know they are royalty? I guarantee you very few. They still see themselves as the Adamic person born of a woman who was born in sin. They still see themselves under their Adamic given name. They don't see what the Lord has done. I mean, they build a building in the world today, they put a cross on the front and write Jesus' name on there, and he ain't there. And they say, come and see what the Lord has done. Yeah. Oh, the bank balance is six million, is it? That's right. We owe six million. Uh, come and see what the Lord has done. But we are the ones that just walk up and say, 
Hoy. Come and see what the Lord has done. Uh, here I am. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come and see what the Lord has done. <laughs> you know? You just imagine walking into a casino and yelling out, Hey! Come and see what the Lord has done! Yeah! Ha 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 ha! Shaya What is that? <laughs> no building. A living stone rolls in to Vegas. Glory, hallelujah. You are! I took that. I said, okay, I, I, all right, I believe you. <laughs> okay, 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 I'm chosen and royal. <laughs> Anything else? You're in the priesthood. Okay, so there's a catch. Oh, wow. You've got to be holy. Oh, wow, this changes things, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I've got to walk in the truth all the time. If I want to be of this generation, the godly generation. Because all the generation before was so ungodly. All the Jewish generation is so ungodly. They were the, recorded as some of the vilest people on planet Earth, the Jews. What they got up to, killing and slaughtering their children and offering their children up on stakes. To all kinds of gods. You know? You are a chosen generation. Right? Chosen generation. Uh, look, destined for bliss. Hey, doesn't that make you glad? I know I'm glad. Right? You are a chosen generation. Royal priesthood. You know, pick me, pick me. I never even said that. He just chose me. And that make you, makes you feel special. I know I feel special. I'm not on special. <laughs> I feel special. The Edemic are on special. Oh, you can have me. I'm on special, you know. I just down a few tequilas and then I'm on special, you know. I'm anyone's. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Haribo's jellies. Don't touch it. <laughs> Don't touch it. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. There it is. Priesthood extending into holy nationality now. Extending in. See that? Double emphasis. Royal priesthood. Holy nationality. What nationality are you? Holy. Oh, no, I'm Irish, you know. Uh, I'm English, yeah, yeah, I come, uh, Darren in, uh, where was that again? Bo Bells, was that it? No, a holy nation, his own special people. Something no one else has. The Lord takes them out of every tribe, tongue and nation to be his own special people. They're no longer African, Fijian, Samoan, Filipino, Irish, English. There's no more of that. No, 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 no. This is holy nationality. Holy. That's, that's his people. Because that's his way holy 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 his own special people that you may proclaim the praises we're doing it today i've been doing it today last week i've been doing it um, since we started the christos confrontation series i've been praising him i've been glorifying him in that um He's the root of everything I've said. And that's why he, he chose us for that purpose. He didn't choose you for anything else. He, he hasn't uh, chosen us and, uh, and made us 
royalty and, and, and priests, priests, that we can um, pray for the people, go to Father in the name of Jesus and pray for the people's salvation, our family's salvation. Pray that the backslidden will come home. And that's a priestly job. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of sin. Hey? What a glad, what a wonderful, blessed uh, calling. It doesn't say there that he, he took us out. But he called out. Is that what it says? He called us. Did we come out? Are we still in the darkness? Because if we're still in the darkness and we're still in the sin, we're not holy, are we? We're not his. We're not special. We're on special. We're selling ourselves short. Hey? That's the world, the young women, the young men, forever selling themselves short. Oh, I just got to get married, you know, I just got to get married. Everybody, all my friends, all my friends are getting married. Yes, they're all growing old. They're all staying home on the weekend. They're all doing what Jezebel says. Well, I walked into the bar the other night and I saw an old familiar face. He said, hey, how are you sure, my boy? That's not us. That's not us. The Lord has taken us out. The Lord has shown us we don't sell ourselves short. We're not on special. We're not cheap. We're not cheap people. We're, the world is cheap. They, they rob and steal and thieve and lie. They, they carry on like pork chops. They're, they're not honest. They're not holy. They can't be. Hey? He calls us out. He called me out. He called me uh, into his kingdom. He, he called me into his ministry. He called me out of the darkness. You don't have to come out. You can stay in the pig pen. Or you can come out and be washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And then you can go back to the pig pen. Or you can come out and you can vomit all that sin out and be delivered from all that sin as Peter says, same one, same man speaking, Peter. You can vomit all that sin out and then go back and eat it. As a dog returns to its vomit and a pig, a sow, she returns to the mud, the sin. The vomit is sin, the mud is sin, type of. The man is the type of dog. And the woman is the pig, as Jesus said, not me. We can go back like that. But we're not special anymore, are we? We're on special. Hey, discounted. The devil's discounted us. Hey, cut price. <laughs> hey, but Jesus bought us. Jesus paid the price. Jesus bought it at a price of of his blood. Right? Didn't he? 1 Peter 1 To the pilgrims of, of, of the dispersion Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia The elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of the Lamb. What do you think of that? Huh? 
Verse 4, he has given us an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away. Reserved in, reserved in heaven for you. You are kept. He said, you who, you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for the saving of your soul to the uttermost, ready to be revealed in the last day. You are a chosen generation, a chosen people. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special. You know, people are looking for identity. People are looking for belonging. People are looking for all kinds of things today. It's all in Jesus. Can you imagine? You know, just think about it for a minute. Royalty. He's 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 called us. He's chosen. He's calling out to people. When I go to Vegas. He's going to be calling out through me saying, Hey, how would you like to be in a royal family? How You don't have to be in the gutter because you lost all your money. And we know that Las Vegas is a fallout shelter for every American and every man and woman in the world that's lost. It's a fallout shelter. Vegas. It's full of losers. And even the winners are losers. Because the biggest winner has been lied to by the devil and taken further away, even the biggest winner, from the road called straight. So they're the biggest losers, the winners in Vegas. They're the biggest losers. And everyone goes there from all around the world. And then all the nationalities you can think of are there. But the Lord's saying to me, you go there and ask them if they want to be of your nationality. And they'll say, what, are you racist? I'll say, yeah, I am. And I'll tell them why. I said, if you're not of the holy nation, you're nothing. Going nowhere except to hell. See that? I'm not racist when it comes to colour and uh, endemic nationality, but I am racist when it comes to Jesus. You have to be of the holy nation if you want to hang out with me. If you want me around, you've got to be of the holy nation. Otherwise, I won't bother with you. That's it. Have no fellowship with darkness or the people of darkness. What fellowship has holy with unholy? What fellowship has righteous with unrighteous? What fellowship has Belial, the devil, with Jesus? The Baptist guy I was telling you about during the week, he said to me, What? You go into Vegas? What? Sin City? I said, Exactly. I said, that's part of why you're so miserable and you're so bogged down and worried. I said, because if you do have the light of Christ, you're shining the light in the light. You're not shining the light in the dark. Hallelujah. And the Lord's taken me to the darkest to shine the light. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, give me a light. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave me a light. Oh, and I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave me all oh, the, the, the light. And I'm going to let it shine, shine, shine. Oh, I'm going to let it shine. That's why he gave us the light. Shine in the darkness. They need the blessing down in Vegas. They need to know there's a greater blessing. They, they need to know they can become in finite hands. They need to know they can be glad. Lads and lassings. Nothing to do with the dog lassing. They, they, 
They need to know everything can change in a moment. They need to know that they can leave it all behind and forget the past. They need to know that they can confront the issues within, without, beside them, around them, above them, underneath them. Everywhere they go, they can confront it all Christ way and come out glad. They need to know that they can exchange the Sunday gambling scene and, and whatever they do on a Sunday, get drunk or whatever, and they can exchange it and say, hey, I was glad when when Josie rang me up and said, let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's go down to the house of the Lord. I was glad. Oh, so glad. Because Brownie was coming around and he wanted to go and get a bag of ganja. I was so glad you rang up and said, let's get out of the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey? Royal. Royal me. Royalty. You wouldn't dream of it. Hey? That he chose me to be a royal person. Chose me to be in his royal priesthood. He chose me to miraculously transform my nationality, my even down to not just the marrow, gel and bone separation, but actual DNA changed it. Now I'm a child of God, of the family of God born of his spirit, washed in his blood, joint heir with Jesus. Man, am I glad I have an inheritance. My dad never left me an inheritance. He left, I think he left one bottle of beer in the fridge, by accident that was, <laughs> when he died, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I sat back and drank it and said, oh, thanks, Dad. Beauty, mate. You know? But the Lord said, I'm going to give you an inheritance you can't count. But so many people bogged down with earthly inheritance. They're, they're jumping through hoops and over poles to get it. Hey? When my grandmother died, she had a lot of money and, and a lovely house and she split it up between the three sisters. My mum and her two sisters. And all sorts of things were going on. People going through windows, taking things. And, oh, where's the piano gone? I don't know. The grand piano? Yeah, that was used to be over there. My mother just, she didn't even flinch. She just had a cup of tea and said, oh, well, shows you what they are, isn't it? Shows you what they are, doesn't it? When crunch time, let them have it. It'll be the end of them. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Gee, I like that. And now she got a in finite inheritance because I brought it to Jesus. Brought old mum to Jesus. She said, oh, of course I'm a sinner. Everyone is. Yes, you can be born again, mum. Let's pray. Let's rejoice. Oh, hallelujah. And she said, oh, this is lovely. Well, you get a touch when the Lord is so real. And she was glad, you know. She was glad to hit the grave. She wasn't, oh, I hope I don't die. Oh. She was glad all the way through till the moment she stopped breathing. She was just glad. She's a glad lassie. Rather to do with the dog lassie, of course. Hey? Redeemed. Royal. Royal means redeemed by the king. Royal means... Oracle people. That's what the O is for in royal. Y is for yoked with Yeshua. Hey, yoked with Yeshua. And the A is for the Almighty's children. Talk about royal. There, there. And the L is for the Lamb's handiwork. 
Oh, that's where quilts we are. Hey, that we're knitted together with truth. Hey? Holy Ghost patchwork quilts. Hey? Warming the society that we're in on a winter's day. <laughs> All the leaves are brown, the leaves are brown, and the sky is grey. <coughs> Royal. Let's open our Bibles in the writings of um, Psalm 138, and we'll finish up. Hey? You know, with all this comes accountability. We have to be accountable. Psalm 138. I'll just touch on that. We have to be accountable. You know, we have to be accountable now that we've come into such a great blessing. Psalm 138, first one. I will praise you with my whole heart before, right in front of the gods, I will sing praises to you. Oh, hallelujah. All the gods around, you know. I love to do that. There's so many gods on the street, you know. I go out there and I sing praises to my Lord. They say, what's he on about? You should be worshipping money. You should be worshipping Buddha. You should be worshipping uh, the gods we worship. No, I worship Jesus. How great the Oh, there he is again. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness uh, and truth uh, and your truth. We, we continue to praise him, don't we? For he, he gives us loving kindness. He gives us truth. For you have magnified your word above your name. That's how important the word is. You have magnified your word above your name. Wow. Oh, don't worry about the word. We don't worry about doctrine. That's how you know they're of the one world church. Jesus, he puts the word above his name. And the Bible says his name is higher than any other. But he puts his word. That's how important the word of God is, the doctrine of Jesus. That's what we master in, in this fellowship. The Lord called me to master in his word. And he's enabled me to master and lay hold of his word like no one else. Totally far beyond any Bible college graduate because it's him doing it, not me doing it, not me straining and struggling and studying in the flesh, but the Lord just goes, bang, now go and show forth the praises of me. Go and tell them what I did with you and in you and for you and through you. Go and tell them. Just keep writing, son. Just keep testifying, son. Anything and everything you can find to testify about me, do it. That's why you're calling. That's what I've called you to. Brother Manuel from California is going to write a testimony and send it to us of how he came across this ministry. And when you read it, you say, that is marvellous light. You say, that is amazing. Right? He said, I can't find anyone to fellowship with in America. He said, they're all backslidden. They're, they're, they're all mixed doctrines, mixed bags. They're all fellowshipping with the whore church, bowing down to um, television evangelists who are lying to them and robbing them. They're deluded. And he said, then the Lord showed me your little fellowship and your message on the internet. And I traced it all the way through. Glory. Hallelujah. And now we're going to meet in Vegas. Eh? We're going to have a cup of tea 
It's as simple as that. I'm just going over for a cup of tea, you know, with a couple of brothers in the Lord. <laughs> have a cup of tea. And, oh, we'll have to go to the street and see what's going on, fellas. Let's go. <laughs> and we'll take the royal message down. Telephone to glory. Oh, what joy divine. I can hear the Spirit moving along the line on my royal telephone. You can talk to Jesus on your royal telephone. Hey, you can talk to the Lord and you can say, Jesus, you made me royalty. A royalty above the royals of the world, that's for sure. Verse 3, Psalm 138. In the day when I cried out to you, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my mind and will and emotions. How's that? Royal. You're royal. We go out there with that message and say, Hey! Sin, sin equals shame, equals hell. That's our message. Sin leads to shame, leads to hell. We have to tell the world it's not going to lead to heaven. Sin will never lead you to heaven. Sin will never find you acceptance and approval of the Most High God of Israel and the universe is plural. No way in the world. We are a holy generation, a royal priesthood. Hey? His own peculiar people to show forth the praises of him who brought us out of darkness into his glorious light. That's our work. That's our call. The whole church to, to go and show and exhibit and display what we've experienced in him and with him because of him. We go out and tell them all, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. It's always Jesus. The Holy Ghost always exalts Jesus. The Holy Spirit will always speak of him. The Holy Spirit will always enlarge upon and exalt our wonderful Lamb. Our wonderful Lamb, Lord, Jesus the Christ. He gave his life a ransom for us. He became sin and gave himself a, a, as an offering once and for all. Propitiation for our sin. That we may have might and strength to fight the fight or fight faithfully for Father to the finish. And everybody said, amen. and amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus, for everything, because you're so wonderful, Lord. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord.